Hey everyone, I just got done editing Darnie's University of Guam graduation photos. She is majoring in criminal justice with a minor in public administration. And if you notice, uh, if you recognize Darlene, she has been on the channel three different times. And the last video we worked together with it was on the Hasselblad X1D. And when she reached out to me if I can be her photographer for grad photos, I said, um, yes, of course. And so I thought it would be a cool, um, cool idea to use the Leica M9P because I haven't used this yet uh, since I got it in for her grad photos. And this video will be a little bit different. It's not the regular Guam photography videos that you've seen on this channel where we're on location and we're doing um, the review of the camera live. Uh, this is me just looking through photos in Lightroom and Darlene's sister Lai was there and she was able to take a behind the scenes video of me using the M9P for Darlene's uh, grad shoot. So I'll be playing some of those videos as um, we go along, but um, I think this camera did pretty well being uh, over 10 years old and I'll be giving some comments if uh, you should purchase this camera in 2020 and the technology is super outdated compared to what they have now on the market. So going into the computer, uh, this is uh, first pick that we chose for Darlene's um, photo. And if you notice, I cut off her cap up here a little bit. And that's because I'm going to get into it later on, but that's because I was still getting used to the frame lines on the Leica M9. I think this camera has very, very good build quality. Uh, it feels great in the hands. When I first unboxed this, I thought it was really small to my eyes. I wasn't used to the size. Um, I did own this camera previously, but I, I was just surprised how small it actually is. Also, it has a really unique uh, shutter sound. I'm going to let you hear it now. It's kind of like it takes a shot and it's rewinding or re recocking the uh, mechanism. It took some time to get used to the center focus patch. And what I've learned from using rangefinders before is once uh, you focus, zooming into Darling here, once you focus on the models or subject's eye, um, all you need to do is just recompose, take the pick. And as long as the model isn't moving, uh, what you could do is just keep on pressing down the shutter button and take shots. As long as they didn't move back um, forward or backwards, um, uh, the model should um, be in focus. And just looking at Darling here on this photo, this is, let me do a reset here. This is basically straight out of camera. And if you notice on her face, highlights are blown, but I, you can easily recover highlights with this camera that I noticed. And all I do is increase shadows and a little bit of vibrance and the colors are really good. Uh, this uh, picture is uh, good to go. Also, I'm not used to the low quality screen on the back of the M9. That's only 2.5 inches, 260,000 dots. So I only use the screen to check in my composition and to check if the exposure I was getting um, is good. Okay, uh, next photo. This photo um, is edited, of course. And if you're wondering what lens I've been using throughout this whole shoot, it is the Voigtlander 75 millimeter uh, 1.5 and all these shots are taken at 1.5. This I might have taken it at maybe f2 just to get um, the wording uh, in focus. Uh, if you notice it is an ISO 80 and the previous shot is ISO 160. The reason why I did the pull of ISO 80 is because my shutter speed was high maxing on 1 4 thousandths of a second but I did notice that after I did pull of 80 and when I was shooting Darlene against um, a bright sword such as of course the sun this huge black bar appeared not sure lowering down the highlights here not sure where that's coming from but it did happen a couple times while shooting and i only caught it till uh, later on so again physical features camera is really well built it doesn't have any weather ceiling but a lot of people have taken this camera into worse worse conditions and it has came out okay. The optical viewfinder is only 0.68 magnification. It's not as huge as other cameras on the market today. Uh, I love the top dial. I usually just put it on, well, my settings for the shoot is, search speed is A, um, ISO is auto ISO, and basically I just control the, um, the aperture 
on the lens itself and of course it just kept it at 1.5 the power switch does have single speed uh, continuous and timer mode and I did notice while shooting it um, the buffer is not that bad maybe after seven shots it'll start to slow down but let's get back to the um, computer uh, this shot I'm going to do a reset here just so you can see the color straight out of camera this is how it looks like uh, raw file uh, no editing uh, straight out of camera I think it looks really good and all you need to do is just increase shadows maybe exposure a little bit lower down highlights and if you want it to pop a little bit more just increase the vibrance so I was doing some tests here shooting against the Sun wondering if it was just the black band which is on the LCD screen or was it a sensor itself then we move to this building uh, now I need to mention something about the frame lines and I was still getting used to the frame lines as you, as you can see Donnie is very sharp and the background still kind of blurred this flare is actually natural with the um, the lens so if you notice in this um, behind the scenes video um, I would be like taking pics and looking at the screen because it is only accurate to the Leica M9 is only accurate to one meter which is about three feet so anything beyond three feet the frame lines are not accurate so if I thought I was getting her full body and then when I check the screen really quick I'm cutting off um, her feet I just have to move back a little bit and take the shot again and uh, took some time to get used to again I like the natural um, flare that's coming out from here um, really great these are edited of course not straight out of camera and like I was saying earlier um, this black band appeared and I'm just doing a quick um, edit here and did not know if it was um, the camera that was doing it or if it was the actual raw file I mean like I, I was thinking it was just on the LCD but it's actually embedded in the raw file and I really think it's because I did the pull um, 80 okay some additional photos really nice photos I, I like I like this set I think this is my favorite one from the set. Again, this is all natural flare coming in. Very sharp, 1.5. I didn't spend too much time like when I focused on Darnie's face and I had to like go back and forth. If I just knew the focus patch was in focus, I just took the shot. Recompose and take the shot. Okay, uh, moving along to outside. Uh, again, let me do a reset here. So this is straight out of the camera and like I was saying before the frame lines weren't super accurate So I was getting more of the ground, but of course in post-processing all you do is just crop it in like that 18 megapixels is not bad um, Highlight recovery is pretty good as well as shadow recovery that I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you soon um, and this is one of the main reasons why you get the um, M9 uh, for 2020 it's just a CCD sensor I mean, this is how it looks like straight out of camera. And then of course you just kind of tweak the um, white balance and exposure, but you don't need any filter. Focus on Darling's left eye. It's really good, really good colors coming out of camera. And uh, other features, and I was surprised Darling was in focus here while I was getting her school of business at University of Guam. So uh, my settings were under the set button. I have it at, uh, let me show you here. Um, white balance is auto. I only did DNG, not DNG and JPEG. Uh, exposure compensation, of course, was at zero. Uh, only certain shots uh, that I do, like here, I believe I put exposure compensation lower, but it still was maxing at uh, one four thousandth of a second. And yeah, this is what I want to show you. Um, dynamic range, not bad. Uh, base ISO 16 or 160. Uh, I guess the camera automatically put it to. Oh, I sorry, I changed it to auto ISO and it's doing 160. So increasing shadows a bit, exposure. You're still able to get it back. May not be super clean, but you can always um, adjust it in post with um, uh, noise reduction. Uh, for the menu side, the settings, um, of course, ISO is auto. 
Um, I did not do, like I said, DNG and JPEG, um, but there is a special feature um, that a lot of people use the M9 for, and that's uh, setting the JPEG to black and white, and from there set the contrast to high, and you get really amazing black and white photos from the M9. I tried adjusting a RAW file and tried to adjust it for the M9 black and white JPEGs to make it look like that. I just can't do it. Some kind of internal processing for the M9 makes the black and white JPEGs on contrast high look very, very nice. Even if you should high ISO, it looks like film. Also going back to the photos here, all you need to do is just zone focus, wait for the right, right moment and just take the shot. We did this probably like two, two times. Uh, so going back to this headshot, uh, this is before straight out of camera. I mean, I think it's good array. You just need to adjust exposure, doing a reset here and everything just looks really good. And Darnie's going to use this for her um, virtual uh, graduation. Um, so uh, just going back to this camera, uh, 2020, very outdated camera. Um, you have Sony's super fast eye autofocus. Fujifilm is like there with their X-T4, great IBIS. And I think most people would get this camera in 2020 just uh, for them to have the joy of photography again. It does take a little bit more work with the manual focusing, uh, manual shutter speed if you choose to do it, manual um, choosing your ISO and using the focusing patch and making sure the Composition is good with their frame lines. It takes a little bit more work, but you do get more joy out of it because when you get that photo you really wanted to get, and it's great colors coming out from the camera, and you see the photo on the screen, you're like, wow, and you know you worked for the photo. Um, you just feel like you're part of the photo taking process versus having a camera that's everything's automatic and just pressing the button, and you look at it on a computer, and of course, you're getting great image quality, but the process that you contribute in taking a photo is it's you don't you didn't really contribute anything um but yeah i think that's the reason why i got it the ccd colors number one um just an enjoyment of slowing down um thinking about your composition um thinking about some of the settings you want to adjust and taking a photo and even though the screen sucks and it's not that great but looking at it on a computer i i just tend to use this camera as a film camera. Just look at the screen for exposure compensation. Okay, it's good. Look at it on the computer like you're developing the film and you'll be blown away by the images it produces. And just that base ISO 160, it can rival a lot of um, cameras out there and the image quality you get from it. Thanks everyone for watching this episode of Guam Photography. Um, if you want to ask me any questions, of course you can leave it in the comments. I'll do my best to reply to you. Thank you.